this keep happening to me? What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quarter. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I don't know how many of my viewers watch late night television. I suspect not very many. Stephen Colbert has gone from comedian to outright government and big pharma shill, and it has been an interesting transformation to watch. Stephen Colbert, while on Comedy Central, used to rail against super huge mega corporations and things of this manner. But last night, I think it aired last night, or at least it hit the internet last night, was what can only be described as the most cringe-worthy, cringe-inducing um, display of corporate bootlickery I've ever seen. And if you uh, are enjoying my content, by the way, I've been talking about today, I'm gonna talk about today, there's something going on. I think I might be uh, getting shadow banned right now. So I'm just asking my viewers, to take a little time to get more involved. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you're watching the video, um, you know, remember to click like and really consider just feeding the algorithm in the comment section down below. See if we can break out of this. Now, the video hit the internet last night and been viewed maybe 5 million times on the various clips. This one's got 4 million views. The Daily Wire tweeting, Alexa, show me cringe. And Alexa shows this, and it is... Stephen Colbert, um, I don't really know how else to describe it, dancing around with a bunch of people dressed up as uh, pokes, I would argue. Um, I, I, you know, most of the people I talk to, you know, I would say the people that I talk to in real life represent, you know, a pretty decent cross section of, of the United States, meaning about half of them have their poke and half of them don't, and nobody talks about it. But, Stephen Colbert must be getting some sweet investment money from Pfizer, who's made, who's set to make, what, $10 billion this year on the poke, or the government who's printing money to do this. I don't understand. I, I would argue that this probably made more people who have the poke want to get unpoked. This is not going to convince anybody. You see the comments. Propaganda masquerading as comedy. This is what all the late night comedy shows are. They just use humor to reinforce media's lies, control the narrative, or works as a PR sanitization. And the lemmings buy it hook, line, and sinker. It's a machine once you see it. Of course it is. It starts with your government, then it goes into the uh, late night television, or I'm sorry, to the mainstream media, into late night television shows, into Hollywood actors. They're all connected, and they all have the exact same robotic messaging. You can see just a lot of the comments like um like there's no way that this is you know convincing anybody and i know like i said many of my viewers have it and this kind of stuff is embarrassing it makes people want to get away um this wasn't just cringe it made me want to throw up in my mouth uh you can see just some of the replies here's from not the bee Here's Stephen Colbert's cringely creepy poke musical, and it's so clear to me now that we're living in a simulation. Some of the replies. What an absolute clown world. What is going on here? <clears throat> by the way, Stephen Colbert is getting outranked by a, a right-wing late-night show, uh, show called Gutfield. I, I don't know. I assume decently viewed. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I'm sorry, but this isn't even cringe. It's like the opening scene to a weird uh, lockdown sci-fi movie, and I'm actually kind of hooked. Like, where's this movie going? Because people are all sorts of wacky. What's up with the poke? There's a musical for it? That's weird. I'll be keeping an eye out for this movie on Netflix. It's bound to be a good one. Also, comedy is dead. I used to think Steve Colbert sucked now, but upon sucked now, but upon lear, learning he makes fifteen million dollars a year, I think the opposite. That takes it from room temperature dog leavings to genius performance art, making as much as a mid cap CEO by doing like 
living la poke loca and crying is BA. That's obviously sarcasm. If George Orwell ever took LSD and had a particularly bad trip, Stephen Colbert's sketch pitch would be what he experienced. And you can see the Daily Caller. Stephen Colbert winning the hearts and minds of the poke hesitant. If you haven't been poked by now, this sure as heck won't convince you. Uh, yeah, and you have the, what is this, the Hunter Games? Meanwhile, in the capital of Pan Am, you have, I mean, it is so weird. Like, I, sold, I'm getting mine tomorrow. He does realize that people are against and aren't part of his audience, right? I mean, this is embarrassing. This is making people who got the poke regret their decision. I mean, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand what they thought this was going to do. And it's when people say, like, there's people that just get it and move on with their life. That's most people. And then there's like this cult-like behavior that's really hard to describe. Does injecting the poke make this man funny to you? I'm honestly curious. If you got the poke but suddenly find Stephen Colbert to be funny. Comedian Stephen Colbert performed an elaborate dance routine dedicated to the poke on his late night show, garnering criticism online for the bit. I mean, there isn't any further that you could roll your eyes. The problem with Stephen Colbert's poke dance was not the dance itself, but the needles he was dancing with. If you just replaced it with men dressed in, in other types, it would have made a lot more sense because you have to be that strung out to attend a Colbert taping. I, I, I don't really understand uh, how this happens. And now you look at, you see a lot of content creators like maybe Tim Pool or Ben Shapiro talking about creating your own culture. Now you see a conservative comic, Greg Gutfield, overtook Stephen Colbert in ratings to become the most popular late night TV show, show host. This is from last week. <coughs> Excuse me. In August 2021, Fox News' Gutfield, late night comedy talk show host, Hosted by right-wing pundit Greg Gutfeld, overtook the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Surprised? We aren't. As media comedy scholars, we've been tracking the recent ascension of the right-wing comedy, which has flourished thanks to the shift in media industry, economics, and political ideologies. Gutfeld's success might come as a shock because it punctures long-standing assumptions about what comedy is, who can produce it, and who will enjoy it. These prejudices obscure an important truth. Right-wing comedy has become both viable business strategy and crucial element of conservative politics. Yes, Gutfield is on Fox News, the cable channel known for partisan right-wing political perspectives and news commentary. <clears throat> but it has all the makers of late-night comedy, too. The opening monologues are filled with Jay Leno-like punchlines that draw laughs from the studio audience. And interviews with conservative politicians, <clears throat> excuse me, pundits and other comedians frequently center on owning the libs with one-liners. Now, I don't, when I want to watch comedy, like, I'm not a huge, you know, I don't really want it to be political at all or, like, the light political jab here and there. This is the type of comedy that I enjoy. But this is what Stephen Colbert's and Trevor Noah's and their incessant political rhetoric has led to. They're so obsessed with being a part of the machine that they've created like this counter comedy that is more popular than theirs. There are silly Saturday Night Live sketches. One recent episode broke from a panel discussion on cancel culture in order to imagine what politically correct James Bond would look like. In the pre-recorded bit, a crudely costumed actor chases down a thief and pulls a banana on him instead of his sidearm. Then Bond heads into the bar to order a latte, a soy latte, instead of a martini. You get the idea. Despite his growing prominence, right-wing comedy remains largely invisible in both mainstream and scholarly discussion of media and humor, in part that has happened because social media algorithms don't send users jokes lightly to challenge or offend political sensibilities. There's also intellectual trends that make it possible for Greg Gutfield to spend two decades sneaking up on the Colbert's of the world. Comedy theorists tend to diminish or at least distinguish right-wing humor from what they deem to be more authentic, quote, liberal humor. 
Philosopher Umberto Eco, for example, demotes jokes that fail to critique power structures on the status of mere carnival. Even more conservative comedy doesn't fit liberals' tastes. It's still, even though it doesn't, it's still comedy, and it's increasingly becoming a feature of right-wing politics. Even Daily Show host Trevor Noah noted how former President Donald Trump's performance at rallies mirrored those of stand-up comedians. Some studies go as far as to identify innate psychological differences that explain why liberals are more likely to laugh while conservatives are more prone to seethe. The research often inspired by the success of liberal satirists such as Colbert, John, Satter, John Stewart, and Samantha Bee certainly provide intriguing looks into the relationship between politics, psychology, and their sense of humor. They are without question pleasing to liberal readers' ego. They do not, however, square with the way Trump's changed the country's politics and culture. The politics of comedy in the early 2000s with relatively big tent media companies and pre-Barack politics tended to joke primarily in the political direction of the largest audience segment interested in satire that moment. The Colbert Report and Daily Show it became hugely successful because of George W. Bush and the inspired countless imitators crowding the media marketplace for liberal laughs. However, comedy's perceived political bias at the time was more likely driven by specific economic circumstances, which now have radically changed. Essentially, there's now a market for right-wing comedy. And I find a lot of right-wing comedy kind of cringe, like boomer jokes, um, you know, even saying things like cringe now feels dated but <clears throat> it's interesting to me and i you know i'm i'm happy for him you know hey gutfield i'd love to have you on or I'd love to be on your show some night i don't know um but the idea is that what it proves is that the market for late night show comedy was never really only liberals or left leaning people it's everybody and now the fact that uh, colbert's been embarrassed by a, a k by the a cable news night show meaning far less people have access to it defeating colbert tells you a lot about um the way industry and comedy and um entertainment will be changing over the next few years and i for one am here for it i hope you enjoyed this video we'll talk to you again real soon